understanding intermediate accounting, financial ratios, and profitability. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. You'll see our email and our phone number listed here. The source for this video is a very good textbook, Keystone Wygant's text. The publisher is Wiley.com, which has some great videos on these intermediate accounting topics. One challenge that we have in accounting is too much information. There's too much data, particularly with technology and the internet, and it's tough to find useful data to make decisions, particularly to explain those decisions to people in the company who are not financial professionals. So if it's a company run by engineers or lawyers or people that manufacture blue jeans, they need a concise way to receive and make decisions on financial data. And you can th think about it as an elevator speech. Suppose you got on the elevator with the CFO of the company, the CEO, the head guy, and he asked you, what were our financial results for the last quarter? Could you, in a uh, very succinct way, explain to him how things were going. If you can do that, you're going to succeed in accounting and finance. And one of the ways you can do that is to explain trends using financial data. And a useful tool to explain trends is ratios. We've already talked about on two videos liquidity and activity ratios, and now we're going to go on to talk about profitability. What I've pulled up here is similar to what we've had on the prior two videos. Here are some financial statements for Levi's jeans, a balance sheet, and an income statement. And if I slide to the bottom, I've got profitability ratios, and I put think making money. This is all about how much money are you making, how's your profitability in comparison with other things like sales. So the first one is profit margin on sales, where we've taken our net income, the $7,000 we got from up here in the income statement, divided by our net sales, which is at the top of the income statement, $100,000, and we find that it's 7 or 7%. 7 and the way to think about this is, for every dollar that I sell of my product or service, how much of that dollar is profit? In this case, it's 7 cents. Earnings per share is next. And it's a little more complicated because earnings per share is the net income number that we used before, the 7000 And then we would subtract from it any preferred dividends that we pay to preferred shareholders. I'm not going to cover that for this class. We're then going to take that number and we're going to divide it by the number of common stock shares outstanding. I put above it here that we have 20,000 shares of stock issued and outstanding. So we're going to take net income, how much the money the company made, 7000 that we got right here. And we're going to divide that by the number of shares that are held by shareholders, 20000 And we get 0.35 or 35 cents per share. So if you're a shareholder and you own one share of Levi's, which is my company for this example, what we're saying is, is that Levi's profit represents 35 cents for your one share. Now the company has a choice with what they're going to do with the 35 cents of profit, of earnings. They can pay you as a shareholder in the form of a dividend, or they can keep it and use it for the company's business, and that's called retained earnings. So of that money in the bucket that they've earned, the earnings, they can either pay it out as a dividend, they can keep it in the bucket as, er as retained earnings to use to run the business. One last thing is, is that we have weighted average here. We would take a weighted average of the shares beginning of the year, end of the year, divide by two. I didn't do that math here, but just to let you know that normally the denominator of shares outstanding is weighted average. The last ratio is price earnings ratio down here in green. Market price of the stock divided by earnings per share. You'll see a market price listed up above here of $25 a share. That is the price that the stock is trading for in the marketplace. We're going to take that market price of 25 and we're going to divide it by the earnings per share, 
which we've already figured out is 35 cents. And we're going to divide those two, and if I click on that field, you'll see that it's 25 divided by 35 cents. What that means is, is that the current price of the stock at $25 a share represents 71 times the annual earnings. And this ratio is used to determine the premium or the amount, the multiple of earnings that you're paying for a stock. When we had the dot-com bubble, we had people that were paying thousands of times the annual earnings of the company, or maybe the company didn't have any earnings at all. So it's a warning bell. If you're going to buy a stock and you look at the market price, the higher the multiple, the less money they're making per individual share, and maybe it means the less value that you're getting for your investment. Uh, it used to be that the, the large basket of stocks that trade, the S&P 500, a basket of the 500 most traded stocks, a price earnings multiple might be 20 times or 15 times. And when those percentages, when those multiples go way up, it might be a sign that stocks are overpriced, that you're not getting as much value as you should for the dollar invested. So you want to think about profitability ratios and making money. I'm going to go back to PowerPoint. And uh, profitability ratio, I should get rid of using assets. That was our last lecture. So profit margin on sales. We're going to take what we did, the, the Excel, the math on the Excel page, and we're going to talk about it in um, common language here on the PowerPoint slide. For every dollar that you sell, how much of it is profit? That's profit margin on sales. Earnings per share. How much money is the company making for every common share outstanding held by the public? And the last one is price earnings ratio. How much would I pay for each dollar the company earned if I paid the market price of the stock? That's the end of part 10. You can find our YouTube channel, Ken Boyd, STL, all in word. Here's my Facebook address. If you want to copy and paste it to go into Facebook. For live one-on-one -on -one tutoring using gotomeeting.com, you can use my website, my email address, or my phone number. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.